Hi friends, it's Pam from Silver and Sparkles, and I have a fun, um, I don't know, I'm going to call this a journal. It's it's not a huge journal with lots of pages, but I think it's a journal. So that's what we're going to call it. I have a fun project for us today. So let me show you the one that I made as my dip my prototype to show you guys is using a kit by My Porch Prints. It's the odd almost autumn I believe I will link it for you in the description but then the one we're going to make together we're going to use my Santa and friends kit so if you're in a fall mood this one's for you if you're ready to move on <laughs> to Christmas and those holidays the one we make together will will be up your up your alley so hopefully either way you'll be in a in the mood for the project we're making today you can use any paper you like so the first thing is the cover is a little bit smaller than the back pages so the the cover and then this page a little bit smaller got double pockets on both of these pages it opens up aren't these papers beautiful and then we get to here and i've been doing large pockets with these types of inserts lately with some of my folios so i've really kind of been in that mood so that's what I made with this one too I just think they look really nice and it gives you lots of options for journaling and it feels somewhat interactive they pull all the way out um, lots of space you know lots of real estate in here to, to allow you to journal and to have lots of tags and ephemera. And these papers were so pretty. I just left those for me to look at and enjoy. We could put a neutral paper there if you want more journaling space. The fun thing about this project is that it is made with two envelopes. And this is actually then a piece of craft cardstock. This was part of that the kit, or not the kit, the stuff that I bought on Facebook Marketplace and it was in that big box. But you can get these kits like at Michael's and Hobby Lobby. So it's like the note card and then, or to make a card and then the, the envelopes. But I am using two of them and one of the, the pages that you can fold in half to make this folio. I'll give you the measurements. You can use envelopes or paper that you have and you could make this work. So I'll give you the measurements on those in a minute. But I also recently posted a video using this almost autumn kit and then the uh, pop-up pumpkin. And someone said they'd love to see that folio when it's finished. So let me really quick just show that to you guys. Again, this, this is the same kit, but using some of the papers with the hydrangeas on there. So I went ahead and added a pocket to this flap. And then this one opens this way. And we have this flap. And again, I said goodbye. Use the words goodbye summer. And I put a few little tags in that side load pocket. And then I made us a nice big pocket here, put a couple of tags. And then I used these because I thought this will be great, like a little notepad. So it's just got some papers in there, tag shaped that I thought were cute. And then here's our pop-up pumpkin to remind you guys of that project. If you missed that video, there's a video that shows you how to make this cute little pumpkin. And I think it's just a nice surprise for this folio. So there's that one. I've added some little bows. I think it turned out really cute. I love the colors. So that's that one all finished up and ready for its home. And now we're going to make this. So I've got to remember everything that I did. Hang in there with me. I've only made this one other time. So hopefully we'll be okay. Let me first tell you what I'm using. So I have two envelopes. And these are five and a quarter by seven and a quarter, okay? And again, if you don't have craft envelopes, you could use other envelopes. Um, I guess, I don't know. I can't really think through right now what you might use instead of envelopes if you want the, them to be the big pockets and everything as well. But you need two of these and then the paper that's folded in half that makes the cover page and the cover in the first page. This piece measures. Looks like this is 10 inches by six and a half. 
so it makes kind of a note card that's five by six and a half. Okay, so, and then these are the papers that we're gonna layer on here to make it look fabulous. So, the first thing that we're gonna do is I am going to trim just a sliver, not closing these up or anything. We are going to trim just a sliver to open up the tops of these envelopes. So you want it to do this, okay? So just trim those up. And oh, we are going to layer some papers on here and then attach these together. So the papers that we're going to layer on this side of both of these envelopes will measure, here I'll get it out. These are the smaller ones. These are the ones that I have available. They're going to measure five inches by six and three quarters. So they're gonna just nestle right in here and I wanted to leave a little bit of the craft paper um, so you could see that. I like that look. I went a little closer to the edge with this one, but I decided I liked that look. So I'm gonna pick two of these to cover my envelopes, and then one is going to end up being the back of our little journal, and I'm not sure which, which one is the back yet, so we'll wait, but think about that when you're picking your papers. I think I'm gonna leave this, well, don't want it to be the snowman or the reindeer. I think I'm gonna leave the reindeer to be the, the back of my folio when I get to that point. Okay, I have not done any inking yet. So y'all are gonna have to hang with me really quick while I do some inking. Luckily, I have my new walnut stain ink pad and it's definitely juicier even after I keep using the re-inker on my old one. Don't know what that is about. I, I seriously, I put so many drops of ink. I've let it sit overnight. I do another layer, let it soak in. And it just, it just never has bounced back. I'm just not quite sure. I'm not sure what that is about. Okay, now, I am going to do a thumb notch. And the way I like to do this is I like to go ahead and line up where I'm going to have this layer. I'm gonna hold it very securely with my hand, I'll use that one. I'm gonna use my one and three quarter inch because I kind of want a wide but somewhat shallow. It's just like that. Okay, so about that size. You can do yours any size you want. But now I know that it is lined up perfectly. So let's go ahead and glue this one together and then we'll do the second one. So I'm just gonna use, I'm grabbing all kinds of glue, my wet white glue. This is PVA Lime Co brand glue. If you wanna see some of the supplies that I use, you can look um, on my Amazon storefront. It is affiliate links, which means you, I, I will get paid a couple of pennies if you end up making an order, but don't feel like you need to. Um, it's at no cost to you, but you can just see some of the supplies I use. Okay, so here's the thing. This is going to be a top load pocket. And so when I go to glue my snowman down, I don't wanna accidentally glue this section of the paper here. So I, I need glue pretty much all in this area of the envelope, but just down this one side of this paper. So I wanna leave the top open and I wanna leave this side open. There's the bottom. And then we know we're, we need this side closed, right? And then I want this to stick fairly well in this section here. So I think that's enough. 
and you get the idea. So the big thing is not to close our, our envelope up. And I'm actually looking at my notch that I made. I got glue everywhere. <laughs> um, but just, you want it closed up along this line, but not, I'm not, I don't know if I'm making sense. You don't want it to close up through here. So I need something probably a little skinnier, and I don't know that I've cut anything out just yet. We'll use the ones from this, this one to show you what I'm talking about. We want something this large to easily slide in there, okay? So we're closed on the sides and the bottom, and then we have this second layer of paper over the pocket. I hope that made sense. So we just have to be careful when we're gluing these down. All right, so we did one. Let's do the second one. And again, we've already, I'm gonna glue this little, little flap down. We're gonna do our notch. So let me get it centered where I want it. Just eyeballing. Whoa. There we go. I'll put that away for now. And we will glue this one down. Just like we did the other one. So again, to refresh your memory, I need just a line of glue. The safe way to do it is just is glue it like you're just gluing this whole sheet down like that. So you want this whole section, but then because I wanna make sure the paper doesn't go anywhere, this layer, I'm adding some extra glue on this part of the envelope. All right, see if I can do better this time. Went a little wonky past <laughs> the size of my paper. Oh, isn't that pretty? This is gonna look great. Okay, now I have to remember what I did and what I did. Okay, we are going to glue this flap to this, the, the back of this piece, or we could do it this way, same thing, right? Whichever, whichever way you want. I want the snowman for some reason to the left. So the first thing we're gonna do is add glue to this panel. Now, if you want, your, where the fold line, if you want that to be inked, go ahead and ink it now, this edge, if that's important to you. And we're gonna add glue just to the flap of the envelope. And again, you could probably figure out, my glue's acting funny, um, how to make this using just cardstock and figure out the measurements, but I have not done that in prep for this video because I'm using up the stash of envelopes that I have. But hopefully you have something similar on hand. All right, there we go. And I wanna make sure this is nice and neat and this is gonna get covered up with paper. You're not gonna see that, but I do just wanna make sure everything is glued nicely. Everything's flipping and flapping the way I want it to. Okay, now we are going to attach this piece. And I, after I glued this one down, I trimmed this little piece of the flap of the envelope off because I liked it, um, I, I think it looked nicer having, whoa, having it nice and neat along the edge. So this one, I'm gonna end up doing it backwards if I'm not careful. It opens like this, like this, and then this one opens like this. Now, obviously, if I did it the way I had kind of laid my paper down, we could have it open this way, 
and then close and open that way. But I like how I did it. It's like one, two, three pages. So we will do it the same way. Let me stick this back in here. All right. Sometimes you have to remind yourself what you did. Okay, so to get this one glued down, I'm gonna go ahead and ink that crease line. Is we are going to lay this where we want it, get it centered. And this is going to come over and be glued to this um, piece of paper that's folded in half. Okay, so the fold line is going to go next to this score line. All right, now to make it easier to apply the glue, we're going to go ahead and trim off our envelope flap. So I drew a line, the height of our pages, and I'm just going to trim this right to the score line, snip it off, and do the same on this side. Okay, and this is gonna give us a little bit nicer finished look. And I want a little bit of ink here. All of this is gonna get layered over with paper. It's just a little bit easier to ink these edges and the edges will show just a touch if I do it now. So we're going to, we're going to. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, let me, let, let me know what you think of the projects. I would love um, to interact with you and engage with you, so please let me know what you're thinking. I will tell you, these papers, see how they're kind of curling? I was a little worried about, all right, we're gonna add glue to this entire flap. I was a little worried about it, but once I added the other layers, everything is, is nice and thick and laid really flat, so. And I printed my digital papers out on the 90 pound white card stock. It's a medium weight, but I, it's kind of my everyday paper. <laughs> I have an everyday paper. There we go. So now we have page one, page two, and page three opens like this. Okay, so now the panels, and I had picked the snowman for the front, the panels for the front and then this page, this page, and this page are all the same size. There's four pieces if you're using the sizes that I am that you're going to need. And this is four and three quarters by six and a quarter. And again, this kit works well. The, the double journal pages that print, let me show you one like this. You can cut them down to these sizes and they layer on nicely. So it's just another way to use pages that you certainly can just print, fold in half and put in your journal as, as pages in a signature. But there's other, other ways you can craft with them and that's what I'm trying to show you with some of the projects I'm choosing to, sh to demonstrate is how you can use them in lots of different ways. I have other videos, tutorials, if you haven't checked them out, that show you how to do a more traditional journal. Um, I have ones that are the kind of the soft-sided, just one signature, and you sew them together. They're great. They're great, and they're an easy side size, and you, you don't get overwhelmed using them. They're great gifts. Um, but then I also have videos that show you how to do like... Um, a journal with a harder back cover and multiple signatures, right? So three signatures or five signatures. So I have multiple videos like that. The only difference may just be what paper I'm using. So if you're interested in those types of tutorials, please go check that out. 
so cute. Now, because of the pattern that I used, I'm not sure that I'm gonna wanna do like this kind of closure. I just really like the snowman here. We may put a word or something, but we may not even put a closure on this one. We'll, we'll see, we'll think about it. I will tell you on this one, I sewed this, and this was actually, I did a video on how to make these, um, the little button clusters, and I used some butterfly ones too. It was already put together, but I wanted to sew it to the actual journal. So before I layered this page, I glued it down and then I sewed through the button a few more times and the, the thread is hidden on, under the paper. So if you are gonna do a sewn on closure, you may want to do it before you layer this paper. Um, it doesn't matter. I don't mind seeing the thread on mine. I do it both ways. Um, but just that's a thought if that's something that you are thinking of doing for your journal. Now might be a great time to do that. All right, but we're going to keep going with the layered papers. In fact, let me go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and put our reindeer. This is the back cover page. So this one is the same size as these pages. And I'm going to go ahead and put him on the back. Get that over with. And if you wanted to make this a pocket, you could. There's no reason you couldn't make it another top load or side load pocket. I'm just going to glue, glue him down. But you know, whenever you're layering and doing your papers, always think about that. Do I need another pocket? <laughs> I'm in the you can never have too many pockets club. And sometimes I will install my papers just with that option, even if I'm not sure. But on this one, we're just going to glue it down. So there's always options. All right. It's looking really good. I think these papers go well with the craft card stuck. Okay, so for these pages, it's gonna be the same size. I told you you needed four of those. I've pre-cut some because I also know I'm going to be adding some pockets and some things. So I'm gonna put, I think I'm gonna put, oops, this one, I didn't cut the right size. Oh, you know what? That's because does this one go here? Don't want to get confused. I also did a, I took a piece and I plan to turn this into a, a, pot, a, a page of pockets. So this definitely goes here. So let's do this next. I didn't cut that paper to the right size. So let me show you what I did here. So I took a piece the same size as I layered these, but I went ahead and chopped it into three pieces. So let me give you the measurements. Each of these are five inches wide, and this first one is three inches, and it's gonna just be glued straight down. The second piece is going to be pocket one, and again, it's five inches wide, two and a half, and I'm gonna layer it so we still see our tree. <laughs> And then the last one is five inches wide and then two inches. And it's gonna go here. And I did that on this one. The kit came with these three three stacked, or the, the two pockets. If, if I had left it up and at the top, it would have been three, but I glued it down and just had two pockets. The kit came with those and they fit in here really well. I loved that. And so I wanted to mimic it on this journal. So I just took one of the pages and like I said, I cut it into these three pieces. So again, they're all five inches wide and then you can actually cut the pieces whatever size you want your pockets to be. And depending again on how we install these, we'll determine how the pockets are used. And I already have an idea of something fun I'm going to do differently on this one. So this is the top. I just like to lay it out, look at the patterns, look at everything. I like how it's looking. Okay, so this first piece, 
I'm gonna hold it by this side and we're gonna glue it on these three sides and we're gonna make it a side load pocket there at the top. So that's gonna be super fun and different from the other folio. All right, so again, we left this side open. Let the glue dry before we start messing with it. Now this pocket, I am going to make a top load pocket. So we're gonna glue the two sides and then the bottom. And I have to decide where I want to layer it. And I'm kind of looking at my tree, I'm looking at my paper. Okay, and then same thing with this one. This one is going to be, so we'll have a pocket, a pocket, and then a side load pocket. Wouldn't that be fun? And this works on this page in the folio to have it open to this side. We wouldn't have wanted to leave it open to this side. We wouldn't have had much room because this needs to fold over. But here, I could even have things hanging out if I want to because this is the open edge of our folio of our journal. Oops, haven't glued those down yet. Okay. Super cute. So before we start, and I have cut a bunch of the, the tags and the pieces of ephemera and things, but before we start messing with it too much, we're going to let it dry. But that shows you what we've now done. Super cute, right? All right. So now we need three pieces. And I will have the measurements for you guys in the description. So don't worry if you end up using envelopes and papers the size that I have. Four and three quarters by six and a quarter. So this one I did not cut to the right size. And I didn't cut this one to the right size either. These are all six and three quarters when they should have been six and a quarter. So I just need to chop off a half an inch. So let's see if I can figure out how to do that without messing up on this little tiny trimmer. I think this will work. Yep, that worked. Um, and I'm deciding based on the pattern of my paper which end I want to chop it off of. Okay, so now I have those two strips. But I don't know if we'll use them or not. Now I just have to decide which pages I want on which. And honestly, you know what? We might cut a few of these to make the stacked pockets because I really don't want to lose the pretty patterns. This one, we could do a different shape pocket from some of the other papers I have printed. But these are so pretty. Why don't I do them the same way that we, the way we just installed the other one so that we still get to see the pattern. All right, so let's let's glue this one down on this panel and I'll come up with a different type of pocket for this one. And then we'll chop those other ones up and glue it down. And we can do some different varieties of how we glue the pockets down. How's that sound? Fun, fun, fun. And I like this about paper crafting because honestly, at the end of the day, it's just paper. And if you mess up, wonderful thing about the junk journaling style of crafting, you can glue something on top of it. Or you can start over. <laughs> or you can cut, like, you know, if, if I put this on wrong and it was supposed to be on a different side, I can just cover it up. Or I can cut it and reattach it somewhere else. There's always a solution. There's no mistakes. And even though I have a prototype and how I did the pockets, we really can change it up if we want to. And it's gonna be fun. Okay, so I just have to, again, pay attention if I decide to do a side load to make sure I leave it open on the correct side. Like this one, if I wanna do a side load, I need to leave it open over here, not here. 
and this one I would need to leave open on the right side, not the left. All right. And this is where I was talking about. Now, I'm going to want to do these the same so they sort of match. So I am going to make the bottom pocket. This is a little bit shorter. Let's make it one and three quarter inches tall. I was looking at that bird. This one, I'm going to do a two inch strip. So it can layer just like that, not cover up too much of the bird. And then this last piece can go right here. Now you lose a little bit of the height, and this is where if I had not chopped off <laughs> the pieces, we could always glue them back at the top just for decoration if we want to. Um, that might have worked better. But I'm gonna cut this one the exact same way. So I did one and three quarters, just because the layout, they're together. So I did one and three quarter inch strip, and I did a two inch strip, and that leaves that piece. Okay, now I do want a little bit of inking the tops of these pieces. So they're going to be the tops of my pockets. This piece isn't going to show. It's going to be layered over. If I decide I want to glue those back on, I can. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, I can just glue this straight down like I did on our prototype and then just have the two pockets. Or I can stay with this idea and have a side load on both pages. And why don't I do that just for the fun of it? We don't have to put anything in there if we don't want to. Now you'll see this one is more narrow, so we're not going to have as much real estate, so to speak, um, as we do on this one, where it's much wider. But we'll still install it this way and see what happens. So, glue at the top, the one side, and the bottom, and I held it by the side I want to leave open. And I'm going to come down just a little bit so that, and if I need to, I can, there it is, the top of the little tree. I can glue this piece right back on there and just have a little decorative piece to cover that up if I want to. Gave us a little more room. All right, leaving the top open, we're gonna glue the two sides. So if you decide to make an envelope based folio or journal let me know i'd love i'd love 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 to see what you make if we're not already connected on social media please reach out to me like on instagram or facebook whichever one i do more on instagram that's where i have the majority of my followers but i am starting to use facebook more and more i'm trying to get get some folks some interested folks there so if you are around on social media and you craft and you recreate some things, please let me know. I'd love to see what you make. Some of you already do that. And it's so fun to see. Um, Jennifer, I'm thinking about you. There's others. All right, we're going to leave this side open this time. So I'm going to hold it by this side. Um, and if I didn't mention you, I'm sorry. I will try to start. Um, bringing some people's usernames with me so I can give y'all a shout out. Jennifer's been one of my followers though for a long time and she makes beautiful crafts. So anyway, I would love it if you guys, I always double check what I'm doing, um, if you guys share with me what you're making. I am about to get really, really busy um, with my, I'm looking at this pocket too to make sure I line it up. Um, I have to go into production mode here soon. I've, even though my craft fair is not until the end of November, a lot of the things that I'm making are 
very labor intensive in a fun way. You know, it's kind of fun and I don't usually do a lot of what I consider like production work where I just do the same thing over and over. But I have to make some more of my lollipop favors and my candy favors. My tea favors are pretty much done, I believe. Got to stuff all my hot chocolate favors. I just I still have a lot to do. All right, this one... I think I would like to bring it up just a little. So I'm going to glue these back down. And with the ink on them, I think it'll just kind of give it a fun little design element. Let's see. Let's hope. Let me see what it looks like if I lay it back down. We get the top of our tree back a little bit closer. I like it. And this is just going to be glue all over. Um, if you decide you want to chop yours and do the, the three stacked pockets, you may want this piece of paper to be a smidge taller. There we go. <laughs> it's almost like I knew when I cut the paper too tall that I was gonna need that, that extra half an inch here. Okay. And we'll layer this and we get the top of that tree back. All right, so we are about at the fun part where I'm gonna make one more little pocket. Just decide what shape I want, what paper I have already printed that will work. And then we're gonna stuff some of the tags and things that I've already cut out from the kit that coordinate. And of course we can add ribbon and different things as well. This one needs a pocket. We have three pockets here. And I think I'm going to, oh yeah, I want to put something in these pockets, but I think I'm going to leave those just so that we can look at them. It's kind of like how I decided on this folio, I really wanted to look at those pages, so I left them blank. You have options. You have options. Okay, you guys get tired of me saying you have options. So another fun thing we have are some of these envelopes. What? Let's try this. Let's try this. So I, I cut this one out. I haven't folded it up yet. But here's how I do it, by the way. So I've already, I cut it out just like it comes on the paper um, when you print it. But then I lay my ruler where I'm going to want to fold the envelope. And I just do a light score. And I do that on these two flaps and then the little two side flaps as well. Um, maybe this will help you if you have trouble getting these to fold up neatly, like I do. And you can do this on a scoreboard too if you want, but I find that's just pretty quick and easy for me. So I fold those in, not sure which one, but that's the bottom, and then this is gonna be the top. It's just a cute little square envelope, and you can put things in it. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to glue it together and then clip it onto that page instead of making a pocket or make a pocket and tuck it in there, I guess we could do. But I really wanted to use this one. It's a very simple, simple pocket or envelope design. And you can always miter the flaps if you want to. Um... You know, you could miter it a little bit. You just have to be careful not to come in too deep or you'll see that. All right, we're going to add glue to this section here. My glue is getting, or my bottle where it needs to be refilled soon. Isn't that a cute little envelope? Love it. Okay, so what I was thinking is maybe we would do some kind of cute little paper clip with some ribbons and just clip it on. But let's make a pocket for it. We can also add a paper clip if we want to. Let me see what papers I have. I think I'm gonna have to cut a piece of this one. Ooh, that'll make a cute corner pocket, won't it? Look at me go. I'm just going to chop, chop, chop. That was the one that I had printed and that was sitting here and I'm gonna make it work. All right, now if you download the kit, here's a, a, a little helpful hint with, or at least with my printer and I have a Canon. If the paper, if I'm printing like PNGs or JPEGs, I can choose borderless printing 
and I can print them without that white edge if I want to. I'm gonna draw some lines and just make this not a full triangle pocket. Make sure I get it nice and neat though. I just chop it off. Um, you can choose borderless printing or I can and then I don't get that. If I am if I download it and I use the PDF version, and then you can like just hit print and print all the pages at one time without having to open each one and print each one individually. I can't figure out on my printer a way to do that um, and not have that border. So depending on what I'm using the papers for, I may print them with the white border or I may not. It just depends. So sometimes you'll see me working with my kits and you'll see I'm cutting that white border off and sometimes I'm not. So I don't know if that has helped you guys at all or if you figured that out with your own printer, but that's just something. You know, that, and that kind of helps me decide which way I'm going to download it. I know some people prefer to have like the PNG images so they can just download the one they want to print and they don't, it does, it, their computer maybe runs a little bit faster that way. So I've been trying with my newer kits to offer them that way. Okay, so now once that's dry, this cute little envelope can go in here or this little envelope can go in one of these other pockets. Okay, we have places we can put it. Um, and if we want, in my others, we can come through and decorate the pockets a little bit more if we want to, um, and we don't have to. Like I said, I spent quite a bit of time, went ahead and cut out a bunch of the tags and the, the little banner pieces and things like this that... Um, come with the kit and I just think they'll be cute to stuff in the pockets and then I can or whoever ends up with this folio can use them to decorate other pages or to add to gift ba bags you know as, as tickets tags those types of things I think I'm gonna glue this one you won't see the little banner piece but I'm gonna glue it down I don't want it to close up the pocket but I want it to decorate the page just a little bit just like that cuteness all right just added a little extra let's see about some words um how about let's be jolly and maybe that will be good for the front and again the words in this particular kit print two different sizes but it's the same set of words so you don't have to figure out how to do that yourself on your printer if you don't want to or you don't know how you can get them kind of big or a little bit smaller decide where does let's be jolly where does it fit and I again have been crafting a lot today I think you guys probably think my hands always look like this but they I promise they don't I'm gonna put that right there. All right. Um, and now it's just going to be to stuff it. And I am not going to stay on camera with you guys and do a bunch of tags and things. What I am going to do though is just, even though these aren't finished, my little tags, that's gonna disappear, it's too short. Um, this is part of the freebie, isn't that cute? I will have to go back and add ribbons and lace and fun things to all of my little tags. That one's the one that's kind of skinny. I told you we're gonna have to have something skinny to go in there. Um, but I'm gonna do that off camera. And not because I don't think you guys would enjoy it, but I want to, um, it, it, sometimes when the videos get too long, they're really hard to upload, and that makes it a little bit easier. I do think, let's see, one of these, but I just kind of wanted to give you an idea of what it's going to look like. This one is wide enough, and so then when I put a cute little ribbon topper here, 
and it's hanging out, it's gonna look super cute. And I think this size is gonna fit, it will. And these two, um, I think I have another one that size somewhere, somewhere. So yeah, this worked out. I have to remember the top of the pocket starts down here because of that strip that I put on there. So lots of pieces. There are lots of things that can be added to this folio. This kit, um, you could spend a lot of time fussy cutting this kit. <laughs> I may decide I want to back these tags got to think about that. That'll work. Um, back these tags so that you don't see that white on there. All right. Now, the other thing that I told you we were going to do is come up with something to flip into these. And I don't think I have more papers printed right now. I didn't think about making the flaps but I can give you the measurements of what will work and we'll do one with the Santa. I can make him work. Of course, I gotta think if you got him folded over, he's gonna like not have a head and I don't wanna do that, but I do have an idea. Okay, so stay with me. Let's make him be about this wide and then I'm going to trim off the white piece. We're gonna put a hinge on here so we can have Santa, we'll have to cut his feet off some, he'll be too tall. Um, we can put Santa in this pocket and he won't be upside down and everything will be good. To save a little bit of time, I'm gonna use my ruler and just tear this and then I'll give you a measurement on the width. Just make sure it's gonna fit. And it does, see that? And that's the other thing is you can just put a super tall tag in here and you don't even have to worry about it flipping over. But I kind of like that. So let's do it. Let's do it. This is three and three quarters. I think this pocket could take a wider card. You could make it four inches, probably go four and a quarter and it'll still slide in and out without a problem. Now, the height, I need to, I'm going to tear them off about right here. Let's see. Yeah, I may have to take another, another little bit. I don't want it hanging out the bottom of the journal. All right. Happy with that height. So mine, if you want to make yours the height of mine, is three and three quarters. Let's call it six and three quarters. And now I'm going to just make a hinge and we're going to use this piece of paper to do that. So to make the hinge, I want the piece of paper to be three and three quarter inches wide. I want it to be the same. And I'm going to cut this piece to fit. Now the height, it, it, it could be the full height, like this piece is, um, or it could just be a section of that. You know, it, it really doesn't matter. But what I do need is to make it a hinge. I need to make it fit. So I am going to fold over about a half an inch. And we are going to glue Santa to this hinge right here. Just like this. Now, it would be much easier to just fold a piece of paper in half like I did for the prototype one. Those little journaling cards worked perfect that came in the kit but I did not design anything in this kit that, that would work. So we are making it work because I didn't want to cut Santa in half, didn't want to have 
you know, I don't know, having him look weird. And I could have just turned him into a big tag, but I like the idea of having him flip up. Now, I could have printed on both sides of this. I could put some other paper on this side of the cardstock if I want to. I can add ribbon, I can decorate, but you get the idea, right? Um, I'm happy with that, I like that. And I'll probably make one to go in that pocket as well with one of the other papers once I print it. And that gives us a little bit of interest. I didn't add pockets to these pages, but I certainly could. See how you can just keep going and keep going and keep going. <laughs> you can keep crafting all night long. Okay, so I hope you like this project. This is that envelope we made. I hope it gives you some other ideas of how you can use the Santa and Friends kit if you have it. I'll make sure it's also linked in the description if you want to go take a look. There's the coordinating freebie, which is a set of these square cards that coordinate and match. Oh, and I meant to tell you guys, somebody requested that my next freebie be like a neutral page or something so that... Um, you would have some papers, like the other project I made with this kit, the the, the flip down card, little mini folio. Um, anyway, they requested maybe like a green or something that would go with the kit. So I added some background pages that coordinate with this kit, and I wish I had it to show you, but I don't. But there's a neutral, there's a red, a green, um, I can't remember what else. There's several pages and they're free and they're on Buy Me A Coffee. And so I will make sure my Buy Me A Coffee link is in the description and you can check out all my freebies. But it's basically, I think it's called Santa and Friends Backgrounds or something like that. But they're just solid pieces of um, paper you can print, but they coordinate with these papers nicely. So anyway, if you were the one that requested that, thank you. What a great idea. And I hope you guys enjoy it. And you can use it, of course, for other projects as well. Okay. Thanks everybody. Until next time, I appreciate you hanging out with me and I hope you have a wonderful day.